there are parts that are are worth preserving. But 1.35 million acres, bigger than the state of Delaware? Are you kidding me? It's one of the biggest land grabs in the history of the United States. And it was done, this midnight monument, in the waning hours of the Obama administration. I just hope and pray that Donald Trump, the president-elect himself, on day one will take this thing down. It's just so fundamentally, fundamentally flawed at every, every level. We are back with our panel to talk about a couple of national monument designations uh, the president made. And Utah officials and others out west have been negotiating over this for years and have been warning and asking the president not to do it on his way out. 1.35 million acres in one, and the other one, I believe, is around 300,000 acres. And a little bit of a development today that when I think it was the White House tweeted out about it, they used the wrong picture. And that got some blowback, not only from uh, Congressman Chaffetz there, but others. Um, Chaffetz said something to the effect of, White House pick is arches, not monuments. Couldn't find a pick of bears ears and doesn't even know where it is. Hashtag worst president ever. Thanks. Charles, they're not happy in Utah tonight. Well, look, you have to ask yourself, if this is such a great idea, then why didn't he just nationalize all of Nevada and all of Utah? It would have been an even uh, stronger, a better idea. Look, this is a president acting. There's now half a dozen things in a unilateral way at the end of a presidency when he's no longer accountable. This is about as anti-democratic as you can get. You, ran, you were in office for eight years. You ran twice. You got your mandates. And on all of these issues, you could go back to the settlement um, the vote. You can go back to the Arctic, shutting the Arctic and the Atlantic, uh, Guantanamo, re re releasing the next to last handful. He's doing all these things that have been explicitly rejected by his own party, and that he doesn't have the courage of his own convictions getting them done to lock in his successor. It's very anti-democratic. I don't know about the, the merits of the case. I would imagine that have, allowing mixed use and some exploration would be a good thing for the country. But Obama sees himself as the god hovering over the country, dispensing goodies uh, to the extent that he's got control. And he figures, I've got control here. No one can stop me. And maybe it'll be somewhat irreversible. Well, and Molly, as we talked about, I mean, lawmakers out west have been signaling trouble for years, have been saying they worry because as soon as these designations are made, then the federal government controls this land, and they don't. They worry about um, lack of energy exploration or lack of control as a state over any of these millions of acres. Um, I want to, though, put up what the president said in talking about this. He said, following years of public input and various proposals to protect both of these areas, including legislation and a proposal from tribal governments in and around Utah, these monuments will protect places that a wide range of stakeholders all agree are worthy of protection. We also have worked to ensure that tribes and local communities can continue to access and benefit from these lands for generations to come. Lawmakers are telling a different story. Well, there is a context here, which I think is very important for people who don't live out west to understand, which is the federal government controls more than 25% of all land, it controls more than 50% of all land west of the Rockies, and it controls 85% of the land in Nevada. I mean, this is something that people out east just don't understand how much the federal government controls these parts. And they always say that they're going to be very careful to make sure that local use applies and that people can have input into these matters. But that's different from the reality. There there are rebellions going back many decades of local people rebelling against how the federal government wants to wants to uh, allow land to be used, and it can sometimes erupt into violence. I mean, this is actually related to the issue that we saw out in Oregon, in the very remote part of Oregon, where some people seized a federal facility after the federal government. Uh, you know, they were letting people use federal land, and when local people burned some sagebrush on there to deal with some invasive species and to do some fire control because the federal government wasn't doing it, they get in trouble, and it leads to this big standoff that we saw where people died and there were big trials and whatnot. This is a huge issue, and, it, and just because people are consulted doesn't mean that everyone's going to be happy, but there is no theory of constitutional governance that empowers one man to just unilaterally take this land without so much as a congressional vote. Although the question of whether it's reversible, which Congressman right. Chaffetz raised and Charles also raised, uh, that's really questionable because he is using this executive power under something called the Antiquities Act. He's used it 29 times so far, more than any president other than Franklin D. Roosevelt. It, and it may use it a couple more times before the inauguration. Uh, there are court decisions that suggest that while a president has the power to designate monuments under this act, 
they may not have the power to undesignate monuments under it. So once done, this may very well be and, and probably is permanent. Mm -hmm. well, Steve, but we have Senator Lee also talking about trying to undo it and this won't stand, uh, obviously exploring his options. Yeah, I think, I think Senator Lee and others are, are optimistic that if it can't be undone entirely, and it might be able to be, that at least it can be narrowed. There's precedent, legal mm -hmm. precedent for narrowing uh, the scope of, of the taking. Uh, what's interesting is that the Antiquities Act, 1906, was originally intended to sort of protect historical or archaeological sites from imminent destruction. That's why this mm -hmm. president was given this broad uh, power. And it's been so abused, it's basically become something that environmentalists can used to urge the president, usually a Democratic president, to make these colossal land grabs in order to circumvent Congress, who has the power actually to, to protect these things. Um, so I think looking forward from this, one of the things that might result in this, certainly, certainly I think the Trump administration will seek to narrow, at the very least, uh, how much land has been taken. I'm some talk, depending on who you talk to, you could protect Bears Ears with several hundred acres, not 1.3 million acres. Certainly they'll try to narrow it. Uh, they might try to undo this, but I think it's raised the profile of the, this Antiquities Act mm -hmm. in such a way that a Republican Congress with a Republican president will certainly be looking to prevent future presidents from doing these kinds of mm -hmm. uh, land confiscations. Well, and Charles, I believe it was the Utah Attorney General who's already said they're planning a lawsuit, so maybe that's how this Antiquities Act is initially challenged. And it reminds you of what the attorneys general have done in the case of the EPA with the land grab, the waters of the United States rule, where essentially the, 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 the feds are taking control of a pond left behind by a rainfall. And it, what it does is it's kind of liberal overreach, starting with EPA, Obamacare, you can look anywhere you want. It's created a backlash that has now been growing. And I think in the end it can undo more than just what Obama did. I think it can sort of roll back the, the loopholes that have been used by liberals, environmentalists, and others to get outcomes that were never intended in legislation and that have been sort of seized by the executive. I think that this could be a real opportunity to undo a lot of the damage, not just done in the Obama years, but for the last 50, 100 years. Mm -hmm. Well, and certainly we know that there was pressure by environmentalists for the president to deliver more and, and have they've expressed some disappointment that he hasn't done more during this presidency. So. I Maybe mean, a parting gift. The Arctic Ocean is a pretty large body. This is not trivial. No. Bigger than a bear's ears. Well, we understand there may be more to come before he is done. So we'll stand by and see.